Hey guys, this is Steven from the Green Engineers and welcome back to my research video series. We are back looking at the comparison between a few 3D printed, uh, 3D printable materials or 3D printer filaments, um, their mechanical properties. So if you have not watched my intro video on my YouTube channel about how to, um, how to read uh, mechanical properties and know what they are in uh, technical data sheets, please look for that video in, um, in my research video series, it should be, um, you'll find it, it's an uh, intro to, uh, to mechanical, material, material mechanical properties. And I'll try to put that link in the description, so make sure that you watch that video before you watch this one, because you'll have no idea what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, we're going to research um, into two of, uh, two flexible materials extremely flexible materials, extremely, extremely elastic materials. Um, one which is one of the most popular 3D printable elastic materials, and another one the, is a material that we stumbled upon while re, uh, researching through Tolman 3D's lineup of nylons. So the two that we're going to be comparing today is the PCTPE, which is the most flexible nylon co uh, copolymer that uh, Tolman sells. And also the Ninja Flex, the uh, the very popular uh, Ninja Flex, right from uh, Ninja Tech. So we're going to be comparing uh, the standard uh, material properties that we looked at for Tolman 3D, which is uh, four of them. We're going to be looking at the TG or the uh, glass transition temperature. We're going to look at the tensile stress, uh, which is the um, ultimate pressure that the part can take for fail. We have the ultimate elongation, which is the ultimate stretch or stress before the part fails, and then the modulus, which is the Young's modulus of the 3D printer material, which also means the stiffness. So we're going to compare the PCTPE versus NinjaFlex. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to compare the TG glass transition temperature. And Tallman 3D, the PCTPE is a glass transition temperature at 74 degrees Celsius. If you do not know what the glass transition temperature is, is it's basically the temperature that needs to be applied to a material to just have it flex or, or, or become, uh, become pliable under standard atmospheric temperatures, I believe, uh, uh, under standard atmospheric pressures. So if you put this part on the dash of your car, and you have all the windows rolled up and it's sitting under the beating sun, how hot does the inside of the car have to be under normal atmospheric pressure to start to distort and lose its dimensional properties? And if you watched uh, my other video, um, which is PLA versus ABS, you know that PLA has a low glass transition temperature of about 50 C, which is about 120. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 110, something like that. So it's basically 50 times, I just usually do 50 times 2. I just multiply something by 2 and then that gives me a general a general thing. But generally you take the Celsius, multiply it by 1.8 and add 32 to it. So it's about 100, it's about 100 to 110 Fahrenheit where your part starts to distort. So Luckily for us, Tolman 3D is a nylon, and it has a lot better temperature um, stability for uh, dimensional to hold its dimension under heat. So the PCTPE will hold its uh, its temperature. It, it'll hold its um, its shape up to 74 degrees C, and then it will start to distort. Which is about you know 150, 140, something like that, 140 to 150. So after that point, it will start to distort, and then once that temperature drops back down, the glass transition temperature, that is now your new shape, right? So once this changes, once this goes to that temperature, and then start the part starts to relax and flex, and if that temperature drops back down past that 74 degrees Celsius, that is now your new shape, and cannot be returned unless you reheat it up and set it again. Alright, so 74 degrees C versus NinjaFlex. This threw me off when looking at it. It said that the glass transition temperature is, seven, is negative 35 degrees C. 
So, which basically means that it just kind of, fl it's just kind of always in, um, it, it's very, it's very sensitive to, uh, to heat. So it just kind of, it's, it's always kind of distorting and coming back, distorting and coming back. But what I was using for the comparison is the heat deflection temperature. And here it's 10.7 PSI or 0 0.07 megapascals is 140, C, 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees C. So basically what that means is that under 10.75 PSI of, uh, of strut, of, um, of pressure, it will distort at 60 degrees C. But 10.75 PSI is, is, in a, is actually in a vacuum because um, stand, here at sea level in, uh, on planet Earth, um, we have an atmospheric or ATM pressure, atmospheric pressure of 14.83. So that is below atmospheric. So this is in some sort of vacuum. Right? Heat deflection temperature, this is more like it. This is like, what, four times? It's at 44 degrees C. So I guess you could say that um, we have it somewhere around, uh, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still pretty good. Still pretty good. Still pretty good stability. This kind of throws me for a loop. But if it was, I think that the PCTPE has a lot better. Um, has a lot better uh, ten, uh, temperature stability for dimensional, for its dimensions. So uh, PCTPE wins in that category. So go back to. Uh, NinjaFlex, also by the way, uh, NinjaFlex is a polyurethane. Is a polyurethane, uh, so it's probably a TPU, uh, thermal polyurethane uh, mix. So TPU, yeah, there it is. TPU, thermoplastic polyurethane. Alright, so. Next one we're going to look at is the uh, the ultimate ultimate tensile stress. So ultimate tensile strength or stre strength and stress are the same one. Uh, here we're looking at ultimate 3,700 psi or 26 megapascals. So 3,700, while PCTPE is 5,046. So that's another like 2,000. That's another 1,300. Um, 1300 psi that is required to uh, break the material. So PCTPE is quite a bit stronger than the NinjaFlex um, by quite a bit. So if you're going to look for something that has more strength, you're going to want to go with the uh, Tallman 3D uh, PCTPE because it's going to require a lot more um, pressure to break the material than it will for uh, NinjaFlex. So it will be able to handle a lot more load than NinjaFlex before breaking if they were equal cross sections between both samples that you're, that you're testing. Okay, next one we're going to look at the, um, the tensile modulus, which is basically Young's modulus, which is also on here known as the modulus PSI 3D printer. So here we are looking at 1,800 PSI. But for PCTPE, we are looking at 10,594. So that means that Tallman 3D is somewhere around, uh, Tallman 3D's PCTPE is around uh, nine times more stiff. So if you guys remember from that video that I was talking about at the beginning of, the, uh, the beginning of this video with the intro to materials, the, the modulus is that uh, straight line in our um, stress strain graph. So that straight line is our elastic region and the stiffness is basically the slope of that line. So the higher that number, the bigger the slope. And then that means that the material is more stiffer. So that means that it takes nine times more pressure to get the PCTPE to flex the same amount to uh, stretch the same amount as NinjaFlex. So that means that you could apply nine times as much load to PCTPE and it will still hold its shape. So PCT also, uh, PCTPE wins in that as well. So PCT win, PCTPE 
wins in um, wins in tr glass transition temperature. It wins in te ultimate tensile stress, and it also wins in the Young's modulus or uh, tensile modulus. So f the final thing that we're going to look at is the ultimate elongation, which are what these two materials are known for, which is basically how much they stretch before it rips. So here the elongation. So here elongation at yield is 65 uh, 65 percent, and elongation at break is 660 percent. So that means that the material will stretch 660 percent of its original length before breaking, right? So that's that's quite that's obviously a huge amount of uh, stretch. Here we're looking at 500 percent. So 500 percent versus 660 percent. So Ninja Flex has 160% more flex before um, before it uh, before it breaks. But if you notice, the elongation at yield is 65%, which means that if you pull it, if you stretch it 65% of its original, uh, an additional 65% of its original length, it will then um, you know stick to that. To, it'll, it'll now uh, not snap back to its original shape. So if you remember from the intro video, the elastic region at the very top, that is your yield point, where it's the, it's the point between the elastic region and the plastic region. So once you go into the plastic region, it no longer snaps back to its original zero distortion point. It will now snap back at that same slope down to some arbitrary point down here at the bottom. So that's what they call yield. It basically no longer is your shape anymore. And generally, in most uh, engineering aspects and most use cases, that is not ideal because now you no longer have your original shape. All right, so then we have toughness. Uh, toughness is the integration between the stress-strain curve and the stress uh, versus strain. So this is basically how tough the material is. So obviously Ninja Flex is going to be quite a bit tougher because it has an additional 160% of stretch before breaking. So the toughness again is the is basically the area under that stress strain curve. So if it looks like this and then estimated as a flat rectangle, the one that has the higher uh, stiffness but less stretch is always going to lose because, well, unless it's very drastic difference between the ultimate tensile strength, right? So if you go up here on the stiffness up to that ultimate tensile strength, which is 3,700, well here it says 5,800 psi, so it goes up like this and then it like goes up an additional to that point. So this one is about uh, 12,000 12, inch uh, foot pounds per inch cubed or um, meter newton meter uh, times 10 to the sixth. So another thing that we could check is the impact strength. How much, how much um, energy does it take to break a specific set of um, a specific size of material with a notch in it? So it says notch isoid, which is basically a um, a square bar with a notch in it, and then they hit it with a hammer, with like a big weighted hammer, it, that swings down, breaks the part, comes up, and then they monitor how high you originally started and how high after, and the loss of energy between how high you started and how high you went after is how much energy you put into the material to break it, which is also an, another general um, term for you know for strength or for toughness. Right. which is uh, the overall, like, how much it takes, right? 4.2 kilojoules per meter uh, squared, which is extremely high compared to Morse materials. Maybe we'll take a look at some other, you could look at some of my other videos and look at that. Maybe I'll start to do a um, Excel spreadsheet where I add all these stuff in there. Alrighty then. So, 
Let's go ahead and count the victories and the losses of each material. Ninja Flex, quite a bit of a weird material. It has a very low, um, it has a very low stretch before it yields, and also very low uh, modulus of PSI. So it has a very low ramp up to 580. It has a very like um, low angle here at that elastic point to the 580, and then it just keeps going until the so. It's gonna you uh, Ninja Flex is obviously something that you don't want to maintain its shape under pretty much any under pretty much any loads at all. So it's something that you expect to kind of yield and deform. So one of my favorite uh, things that they've done with uh, um, Ninja Flex that I like is they built a few like um, RC car tires. So like any sort of rock crawler tires, and they just like to deform and then pop back and then deform and then pop back. But of course, it doesn't. It's not built to maintain its shape. It's built to flex. So also, you know, suspension pieces and stuff like that. And uh, me personally, I'm into RC uh, RC planes. So if ever I wanted to take a, mo a foam model, cut the nose off of a jet or whatever, and then put a Ninja Flex nose on it. So that way, if I ever crash pretty hard because I don't have any landing gear on most of my planes because they're built for speed, the nose will just flex out of the way and then flex back and then flex out of the way and flex back under any crashes rather than flex and snap. Because foam definitely does not have that stretch. Most foams, we say most foams, we're not talking about EPP because that's kind of on its own, but most foams don't have that stretch before failure. So this will definitely... Um, PCTPE or the Ninja Flex will definitely have that uh, that flexible flex out of the way and then flex back, you know, which it would be ideal for a nose. So that would be one of the applications for Ninja Flex is something that you really don't want to maintain its shape under pretty much any condition. It just flexes, you know, kind of squishy, you know. PCTPE on the other hand, something that you want more stiff but yet will, you know, stretch quite a bit, so maybe, um, maybe a part that you want to just flex out of the way when you get past the loading that you want, so let's say like a, like a safety feature or something, like, um, something that is quote-unquote break away, so maybe like a safety feature on something where you want it to have, it has a specific load on it, and then if somebody bumps into it or whatever, or, it, or falls on it, whatnot, it just kind of flexes out of the way and then flexes back instead of, you know, uh, breaking or hurting the person. So something like that, you know, something... In this case, uh, I like what it says here. They use it as like a wearable, which is a great idea. So if you have something that you want to... Like, let's say you do a Stormtrooper outfit from uh, Star Wars, and you walk around the um, the show floor. You want it to flex with your body to allow it to um, to allow you bigger range of motion. Yet when you stand up on stage and then you stop and pose, it maintains its original shape. It doesn't distort, so it looks like it's very uncomfortable, but yet it flexes very easily. So something that will sit up on. So something that will you go up on the stage and it has it's it's straight you know it's it looks perfect but then when you get off stage you start walking around and moving your arms and your legs and your body it flexes with your body right or again like I said for me personally it would probably be something that I want to have uh, maintain its um, maintain its form so that, uh, and then flex or break away when you have something that um, something that you want to protect. So again, if you want the part not to fail, just you know flex out of the way, but yet stay very stiff and be able to take the load that you put on it because of the very high modulus compared to Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex, again, something that you don't want to maintain its shape under pretty much any circumstances. And that is basically it. So for me personally, I think uh, PCTPE is a very interesting material, but each have its own um, 
each have its own specific, you know, application. Um, like I said, those would be the two two different applications that um, that I would use those two for, you know. And then you could, uh, after learning these uh, mechanical properties, you could go and figure out which applications you would use each for and which one's best for you. All right, this has been Steven from the Green Engineers. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it in my research video series. Um, I will catch you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.